What's up, champ? I'm all good. How are you, brother? I'm good. I'm good. I th I was just thinking. I was just looking at you, and I was thinking. I said, "What's different?" I think you went from a full beard to the goatee. Yeah, that's what. It is. <laughs> <laughs> I was literally just like, "Wait a minute, what happened?" Just someone actually pays attention. I got in today, and I, my my girlfriend just looked at me, didn't say a word, didn't say a word. Oh, oh, so oh, you so you just shaved? Yeah, literally this morning, and I oh. thought she'd come home and be happy, but <laughs> she didn't even notice. Oh, get out of here, really? <laughs> I saw it immediately. I, swear I, said, down. I saw it immediately. I said something's different. So how you been, man? I I heard you just recovered not too long ago from COVID. Very true. I uh, yeah, I had COVID, man. It got got me out of nowhere. I um spent about ten days isolating. Uh, obviously, no training. Um, just had to bring the calories down and just plod through. Really, didn't have any choice to other than to sit at home and rest. Yeah. Um, how fast? You know what, I will say this. It was it was probably a rest I was due to be fair. So yeah, you know. Yeah, sometimes rest is you know it's, it's actually benefits and it helps you to to you know because you still got a while to go before you get back on stage. So it's still you know. So but how how fast did you find out? Did you think you probably carried it for a while and didn't know? Did you get sick? Um, I must have had it for about two days without realizing because I was just feeling lethargic. So uh, yeah, I was just feeling lethargic and I went to the shop one day. To go and um, buy some just some regular like groceries, and I was in there, and the air conditioning in there was burning my nose, and I was like, something's not right. Like my nose was literally like on fire. Um, so I obviously left there, went home, and I was realizing I was really out of breath, like just from walking to the local shop, and that's when I was like, okay, something's wrong. So I ordered a um, I ordered a uh, a lateral flow test, got one of them done, it was positive. A few days later, I did a PCR test, which is the bad yeah. test. That was also positive, so I was like, "Oh damn!" Pat. So, so how about your girlfriend? Is she is she is she positive? Well, was she positive? She's fine now, but she she did get it as well. Yeah, she's yeah. fine as well. There was, okay. there was no escaping. There was no yeah. escaping. Two, <laughs> two days after me, Dennis, she was uh, she was pretty buggered to be fair. Wow. She wasn't feeling good. Yeah. Okay, so but uh, other than the, the symptoms that you just explained, you you didn't you know you weren't really like not knocked out with fever and all that stuff. Uh, no, see, I just had a fever and dizziness. That was all I really had, and my smell went. Um, whereas she had coughing, headaches, mm -hmm. some different. That's the thing that like, everyone feels different from it. So true, true. I was all right. I, yeah, I, I was able to sit at home still and like play some PlayStation and just chill out and not feel yeah. too too groggy. To be fair, I, I had it when I didn't realize. I, I, I mean, I, I later knew because it was just last year before Rami came. I felt like uh, I didn't feel nothing. My wife got sick. So she got sick to the point where she was in bed. I mean, literally three days with high fever. And, yeah. uh, you know, I was like, fuck, what the hell is it? Because I didn't feel nothing. Yeah. So I was like, you know what? Because when, when's the last time we really heard of the flu? When somebody said I had a flu? It's all COVID it's now. So, true. so uh, yeah. uh, and I remember when, uh, you know, that was like three, four days she was in bed. Only thing I realized, and I realized it because I, every morning I, when I wake up, I take a good dump, right? So I'm sitting yeah, there, yeah. and I think maybe two, three days, I'm like, wait a minute, how come I can't smell myself? Because usually I, I smell pretty bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's yeah. when I said, wait a minute, I don't smell nothing. So I took the, uh, the Febreze, the, 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 the spray, you know. Test, test and it out. It, I, almost bl I almost sprayed my nose, and I couldn't <laughs> smell it. I was like, okay, we got COVID. That's when I know. That's the one thing. That's the one thing that's like really gone. But I will say this: it's great when you're dying because you don't crave anything. Yeah, I but I still had my taste, but I just lost the smell, and it was literally same, same. only my, a my, few, my, yeah, only a yeah. few days. And then a couple of weeks later, I was like, you know, let's let's get tested. It was uh, it was not a couple of weeks later. It was actually we did that. That was in November. Then December 18th was the Olympia, and right after the Olympia, everybody came down with COVID. Yeah. So, yeah. and I got messages from people I, I was in contact with. Say, hey, man, I came down with COVID. Please check. You know, I don't want you. I checked negative. So, but I guess I had yeah. it before, and it was already yeah. clear. Because you do, you pass. Listen, if you're healthy and fit, like if you've got no underlying issues, mm -hmm. we'll pass it in around about seven days. So, when you had it, you're you know you look after yourself, especially since bodybuilding. You've been really, um, you know, you've been really looking after yourself. So, I imagine to be fair, you had it for five six days. It passed, and by then it was it was gone. Yeah. And when everyone was getting it, you were kind of through it. Yeah. Um, if it wasn't for because that was with me, I, I didn't do anything other than some vitamin D three and some vitamin C and zinc. I just did the little the old, you know, yeah, manipulating yeah. my vitamins. Yeah, and that was it. 
Yeah. I mean, if it wasn't for the antibody test, I would never know that I have antibodies. Been because, had it. Yeah, that's yeah. how I, that's how I confirmed it. All right, great. Yeah. So, listen, James Harney said, let me go back to what I remember. I had no idea who James Harley said is until you stepped on stage. And what was your first pro show? Uh, first pro show was Spain, uh, the big man show, 2018. I didn't do too well. Oh, so okay, so okay. I thought you you won all your pro shows. So that was the that was at 2018. So 2019. Yep. No, 2019. You won the the, the, the Spain show. Or was so it 20? Nine, no, nine. No, 19, I actually got third. So I moved up. There was 20. Then, there was 20 when you yeah, won 20. two shows back to back. Yeah, 20 was when I won two shows back to back. So okay, when you won the first Spain show in 2020 then, that's the first time I heard about James Harley's head and that's the first time I saw you. I mean, you know, pay attention, you know. I apologize for not doing of that course. earlier because I, I mean, it was just, it was just, I didn't hear anything. Well, listen, we got to do a certain amount of, you know, we got to do a certain amount of work before people are going to notice who we are. It's right, the way right. It's like... Gotta get, got get the wins. Yeah. Now, a funny story quickly. You know, I actually spoke to you back in 2011. Get out of here. Um, yeah, on email. I was in Tenerife on holiday and I was looking for a coach. I didn't quite have the funds, but you were polite as hell. You said, look, I, I, I sent you some pictures and I was obviously an amateur at the time. And uh, you were really polite about my physique and you said, I definitely would be happy to do something. Um, the only thing that stopped me was just at the time I didn't have much money because I was young and a bit broke. So, like, it's in funny. 2011. 2011. Yeah. Wow. All the way back then. Really far back, man. Really far back. Wow. Yeah, I'm probably, probably never, not even remember you now yeah, if I'm yeah, looking at the even pictures. Know, <laughs> I, I wouldn't even look the same. It was uh, literally, I think I had won the junior nationals. So I was obviously like a junior bodybuilder who was the best in the country, and I wanted to be, mm -hmm. I wanted to be a pro. So I was like, I need to like find a coach to help me turn pro. And I remember thinking, Dennis James. Because you were one of my favorite bodybuilders at the time. I'll among get a few the others, fuck so. out of here. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah, so that's, that's why, you know. You got oh. I was always like, because uh, everyone in England was reaching out to English coaches, and I was like, the secret's not the English coaches. I need to reach out and broaden my horizons. Right. And that was when uh, I, I reached out to you. And, so uh, did you, you were, like I say, you were really blind. So you used to live there in Tenerife? This is where, was this where you used to No, hang? I was on holiday. It was, I, oh. was, I was on holiday, and I was, I got the itch to, like, decide what to do with my competing. I was like... Because you know, it's like on holiday. You go on holiday, we don't relax, we think. <laughs> so I was on holiday and I was just thinking about my next plans as a bodybuilder. Right. I was like, ah, oh, time to step up. Well, and, uh, that was when that was when I sent the messages. Well, you came a long way, man. And I got to tell you, you 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 remind me of a, a Dorian. Not only because you're coming out of England, because no, the, the way you the way you look, the, with that graininess that you achieve. You know, with the size that you have, that reminds me only of Dorian because he had that grainy look, that that super thin skin that's wrapped around the muscle. It looks like it's about to yeah. pop, you know. Yeah, and I and I think that that's 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 a huge plus because we don't see that too often anymore in 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 the yeah, in the pro league. You know, and I always say like you got to play with the cards you're dealt. And there, of course, there are phenomenons out there. There are bodybuilders that have the best shape. The best structure, you know, small joints look amazing. And yeah, like we'd all love to be those guys. I'm not that guy, but I do know one thing. And it's like you say, there's a certain amount of condition that I can achieve. And as long as I have the, you know, the the, the size, I know it's what it was. The only reason I, like the reason I was not winning shows in 19 is I wasn't quite big enough. But from 19 to 20, working with Patrick is when I managed to maintain more muscle in my diet. And that was the difference between me coming third and winning. Um, and like, the condition was always something I could get. I just didn't have the muscle because I find it hard to sustain tissue when I'm dieting. So I'm one of them guys, I burn through calories like crazy. It's hard to keep me full. Mm -hmm. um, but then it makes it good for getting condition. So, you know, the last kind of two years has been spent trying to work out how to get on stage without overdoing it and, and maintaining what we work hard to keep. So right. Yeah, that, that's, I appreciate that. It's a massive statement for me. Yeah, that's, that's a lot of times the problem that people have. They have all the size in the world. And once they start dieting, they kind of over diet because they think they need to get in a great condition and then lose a ton of muscle or size at the same time. So whatever it is you guys doing, I mean, I mean, Pat is a good coach. I mean, I know Patrick. I mean, I, we go way back for, to the beginning. And uh, yeah, I, remember, yeah. I remember when Patrick said to me one time, he said, I, I, I want to be like you. 
You know what I'm saying? And look at this guy yeah. today. Not only is he super smart, he's also super successful with, with most people. I mean, we obviously can't talk about everybody because not everybody follows. Yeah. You know, of course, of course. you only have a certain, a certain amount of people that really follow what you, you yeah. know, what you ask him to do. And, and today he's one of the best out there, I got to admit. And I got to, uh, you know, I got to give credit where credit is due. Definitely. And it's because, like you said, like back in the day, what he said to you, he wants to be like you. It's because he loves bodybuilding. He's passionate. Yeah. So he has a genuine love for it. And when you genuinely love something and you have such an interest in it, mm -hmm. the last thing you want to do is taint that thing. You don't want to cause any harm to that thing. He wants bodybuilding to be better. He loves it. So he goes out of his way above and beyond to make sure that his athletes represent what his ideal of bodybuilding is, which mm -hmm. is big, full, in condition, complete, and, and nasty. Like he wants, he, he he's, always says it. We say it all the time on the phone. Like he says the same thing you about Dorian. He's like, we got to be nasty. Like mm -hmm. we're not pre, we got to be nasty. And, yeah. and I, I admire that about him because obviously every one of his athletes is different and he looks at what they have. Um, and, and, plays to their strengths and I think that's what makes a good coach yeah. you know you can't try and change someone too much you know you can take you can take a guy and be like we're going to make you flex wheeler it's not going to happen right like right, right. you know yeah absolutely so, yeah yeah you're right you got to you got to work with what you got and then you got to perfect that as much as you possibly can and you're doing a great job I believe that you are a force this year already in the first in your first Olympics it hasn't been it hasn't been here in a long time you know because there's going to be a lot of new guys uh, rookies yeah. sounds like you know you know you could have been at the Olympia last year. I'm going to ask you, yeah. why did you decide not to do it last year? Yeah. I mean, you you won Spain, you just went back to back with uh, England, yeah. and then uh, you decided to sit out the Olympia. Was there a special reason specifically, or were you burned out? What was the reason for you to say, nah, no, let me wait? So it was literally this: Joe Weider's Olympia here in Orlando, Florida. A little bit strange coming out of Las Vegas for all of those years. Good evening and welcome to the event that nearly never happened. There's been an absence of a particular group of people on this stage that we're back tonight. Tonight I'm here to say, welcome back to Miss Olympia. I had a choice. I had to leave the country for travel because England was shutting down. Oh, right, yes. I had to either leave ASAP. So the British show, when it was actually originally going to happen, was after we locked down. So they actually had to pull the show forward by three days. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was a Sunday show or a Saturday show, and they pulled it forward to a Wednesday just so we compete before the, the country went into lockdown. So with that new day and with the lockdowns occurring, I couldn't actually travel out of the country after. So I just thought to myself, look, the best thing I can do right now, because I, I haven't left yet, is get another qualification for the, the Olympia and have more time. Mm -hmm. So it was simply me trying to be strategic. Like, I either leave the country now, which I didn't because I thought I'd have more time because the lockdown wasn't in place, um, or I grab an opportunity while I'm still in shape and try to qualify for the following one. And on top of that, if you get another win, it's another win. It's more, um, I, I look at it like it's more clout as a professional to have more wins under your belt. So it was just weighing up the two, like, Immediately after Spain, I knew that the country was going to go into to a lockdown at some point, but I had no idea when because it wasn't official. So I don't like uncertainty. I, I'm I'm going to admit it. Like I'm one of these people. I'm not very flexible. I choose not to be flexible on a, for a reason because I'm I'm precision. I miss the precision. If things don't line up, it doesn't happen. Um, my bodybuilding's always been like that. If it doesn't go my way, like if I don't do things how I want to do it then I'm not doing it. And that's why I'm just so anal. Mm -hmm. So with that being said last year, with the whole me not being in control of the environment, I said to myself, the one thing I can control is by going to that British, winning that and qualifying for the next year's Olympia. And I was hoping by this Olympia, everything would be settled, which of course it still isn't. But, you know, there was hope. Um, so I've got a little bit of running around to do for this one, but I'm a little bit more prepared than last year. Okay. So so what, what are the plans for this year to make sure that, you don't have to miss out because it's hard to, I mean, from what I heard, it's hard to get the uh, 
the uh, I don't know if they call it a visa now. What do what do they call it for you to be able to enter the United States? Well, so there's the Esther and there's a visa program. The visas aren't they take too long, so no visa is going to happen. Well, the Esthers the Esther, don't work right now. They don't no, count. And the only way you, the only way you can use any the only way you can enter America from the UK is if you're not in the UK for two weeks prior to entry. So you have to be in either uh, you have to be in a Dubai. Um, well, Dubai really is the only option right now. So Me- I have to Mexico. Dubai. Mexico. Or yeah, Mexico is another option as well. They're the, the two only right now. Um, Turkey? So those are the two. Turkey might be, but I don't know. I think oh. Yannicka, my missus, did say something about Turkey. But obviously, the, out of the three, the only place I really know people when I know that I have access to all the things I need and the ability to train efficiently is probably Dubai. So I'll, I'm, I'm really looking to aim out. I'll probably head out there in about two to three weeks' time spend my two weeks there and then get to America two weeks prior to the Olympia. So I think I've got to head out in two weeks, roughly. Yeah. Uh, so a four week, four weeks kind of traveling, which again, like, oh, I'll say to you then, it's like, I sound like a bit of a moaner when I'm like, I shouldn't have to do it and no one should, but it's just because I've, I've, I've got friends that do World Strongest Man, Adam Bishop, people like that. And I, my friend, Adam, who competed in World Strongest Man, he got a waiver form and went straight there from England. I can't, yeah. So, I, so I'm kind of like, yeah, so I'm like, bodybuilder, I feel like the government, in where, whatever government it may be, whatever powers it may be, I don't think bodybuilder is taken as seriously as other sports, put it that way. And I just, that's the frustration. It's not for me personally, it's for us as a whole. Okay. Because I wish that, you know, yeah. I'm going to tell you something now too. I'm not defending the Pro League because the Pro League, they do write the letters. That yeah, you I don't know. think it's them. I, 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 I not once said it's them and that's why I was trying to, that's why it's good that we're saying this because I, I I actually think it's, we're not taking seriously the, the, the IFBB. Exactly. I can tell you exactly how this happens because I just went through this with a German competitor. There's a German competitor. Yeah. She wanted to, she wanted, she's an IFB pro. She got the letter from the pro league exactly the way they need it. They and, try to help. They do. And yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then uh, her husband, you know, he, he, he wanted to, uh, uh, you know, he, he wanted to get, come with her. So. We in, we officially invited him as a photographer for the because he shoots yeah. he's a photographer for the pro league Germany he shoots pictures for us so we got an invite for him from the pro league and both went to the embassy together this is a married couple she's an athlete yeah. she is the athlete he's a photographer he got the visa she was denied so now it's something like <laughs> against us as bodybuilders no. that's, what I've, that's what i've come to know this. okay i'll tell you i'll tell you exactly this is like wait a minute this doesn't make no sense so we went so far that when she went to the embassy she had the, the interview she gave my name as a point of 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 contact in the u.s so and it's not the embassy that decides it's the they have a COVID department now that makes those decisions because the embassy can only say you can go, but the COVID, they have to give you uh, 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 the green light. So I talked to them. I literally called them on the phone and explained to them, you know, listen, she's a competitor. She's in the IFB Pro League. And then they said this, okay, what's the IFB Pro League? Is that a, a real federation? I was like, yes. Well, where is the world rankings? Is she is she hired? Does she get uh, is she does she get is, is she getting paid by the pro league on a monthly basis? Does she get salary? Can she prove? I was like, uh, no. Uh, what's the where's the do, do do they have a world rankings like in tennis, like in other sport? No, then they don't accept it. And that's what's making it hard for us. And that's what yeah. that's why I, I that's my frustrations for us as a bodybuilding league. Like I I, I support the league. Yeah. Uh, I think there's there's a lot of misconception when I did a post back in the day trying to explain my frustrations because people think you know it's like people think you're you're blaming someone or someone. I'm not. I'm actually feel sorry for us as a whole. Mm-hmm. I feel sorry that we're the one, the small, the, the small, the, the federation that isn't looked upon in the same light as the others. And uh, I wish that there was change at a higher level for us. Yeah. But there's not. And like you say, we got to jump through hoops. If we have mm-hmm. to jump through hoops, we must. Because the IFBB, like I spoke to Dan Solomon directly, and he's like, I'm happy to pass on. Uh, you know, emails to the right people to help you get here and find a way. They go out of their way. They really do. They they will literally look for the the travel path. So you know, respect respect to all of the people involved in the mm-hmm. IFBB. Certainly not them. Certainly yeah. not them. Yeah. And and when I was talking to this guy, and I'm like, you know, and I had I had nothing to say against what he's like, you know, like you can't. There's the stuff it is there. It's but like, in the same phone, that's, that's in, another thing, in the in the same phone call though, he said like, you know, it's almost like he said this like this, like, but listen, if you go to Mexico. 
Yeah, <laughs> that's all she is. <laughs> yeah, and why would, it, but, why but would you say that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's exactly what I've been told every time, man. Just, yeah. But if you're in Mexico. Yeah. yeah, that's crazy. So, well, listen, yeah. we will really hope you make it here. And I hope when you go, if you choose Dubai, I hope that, you know, nothing happens like last year where Dubai all of a sudden shuts down and you can't even well, leave. What's the problem? You can't. You just don't know, do you? Yeah. You might end up in the country and then they go red as well. So, so do you, you know, need, do you need a, a COVID test to go to Dubai? Uh, I only need a negative test. That, um, and I've, I, I haven't been vaccinated, but my, my missus uh, took a PCR the other day a few weeks after having COVID and it's coming back negative now. Okay. So hopefully mine will yeah. So I'm going to get one this week. So yeah, so you need a test to go there for them to know you're COVID free and then you need to stay yes. there for two weeks. Then you take, need to yeah. take another test in order to get to the US. Yeah. That's yeah. Yeah, and you can fly from Dubai to Miami, which would take me obviously near to um, Boca, which is probably where I'd head because of Redcon. Oh Red yeah, yeah, guys. you're a Redcon athlete. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah so I got to hang out with them guys and then it, it's yeah. not too far from the, you know, Florida and, uh, it's in Florida, sorry. So it's not too far from the venue and stuff. So, uh, yeah, yeah it'd, be, it'd, be, it'd be a really nice trip. Yeah, it's only a drive. So how, how excited are you, man, going for the Olympia this year, man? And what are your expectations? Where do you set yourself? I, uh, where do you see yourself? Dennis, I'm like you probably. Some days I believe. Some days I truly believe. Some days I'm like, I can be the best in the world. Um. Sometimes it's just the stare, the fire's there, and I know that there's something there because I wouldn't have got this far otherwise. And then there are other days where I look at myself and I'm wondering if I'm where I need to be. And, uh, you know, that is bodybuilding. I don't think any of us are truly ever satisfied with ourselves or have our absolute belief all the time. But what, what matters is how you, you know, perceive that information and how you deal with it. Like the days that you don't feel overly great, you have to get the boxes ticked and you have to come away from that day knowing you've done everything you can, even though it's not necessarily your favorite day. Because mm -hmm. there will be days that feel like they're the best days. And I've never felt confident going on stage. I've never felt like I'm going to win a show I've done. Um, but that that's proven to me that you don't have to be the most confident to win. Like winning comes from the work you do, not not, not how you necessarily feel. Right. So I'm, more, I'm, I'm confident without being confident because I've realized that you don't have to feel like king of the world to defeat people in bodybuilding. You have to just work your bloody ass off and make sure you don't miss a thing. You've got to be a robot. I was always told by my, you know, my older peers, people that used to compete back in the day, you know, it's about being mundane. It's about being boring and it's about being a robot. It's about being dedicated to the cause, like where others aren't. It's an endurance sport. Like others pull out before you because they get tired of, of the monotony of bodybuilding, but that's, that's the beauty of it. Mm -hmm. Who can deal with the monotony the most? Who can, look at Jay Cutler, like the way that he just, Look at the way you did. Like, you guys were living the same day, Groundhog Day, every day, and you didn't you didn't falter. You 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 persisted and you pushed, and that's that's what keeps me going. Yeah, you know, and I and I feel like I can defeat anybody if I get it right. Anybody yeah. if I get it right. If you compare yourself from 2020 to today, what would you say has changed? Um. From a, like from a uh, from a, a mental standpoint, I'll say first. Um, I feel that there's definitely more belief because I've seen, I've stood next to great people. I haven't stood next to the best of the world, but I've stood next to people I never thought I could challenge, and I and I've managed to you know pip them for the win, and I've I've come to realise that. I've had a whole another year of, of of progression working with Pat and I haven't missed a beat bar the you know the COVID experience. So I'm only going to be better than I was. And then from a physical standpoint, I just I'm I'm I just feel older and a bit wiser, like how I train. I feel more in tune with myself. I feel mm. more aware of what training works for me, whether it's something as silly as what exercises work versus how long to train for, you know, how long should I be in the gym for, how much should I rest? I just I just know myself more than I ever have. Yeah. And how long do you train every day? How long is your sessions? Uh, so, you know, obviously do my, I do like cardio in the mornings, which is like about 30 minutes. And then my sessions are probably around an hour and a half. They've sped up, actually. I used to be a really slow trainer, but since I've uh, been dieting and lost, I'm like 20 pounds down from when I started. And I, mm -hmm. I can get through the exercises a lot quicker. And I like pace. I actually do like training quite fast. Um, feels better for me. So, um, yeah, about 90 minutes and I can get a good session knocked out. So 30 uh, minutes? We're training five days a week in a minute. Oh, okay. So 30 minutes of cardio for you is enough? 
Uh, currently, yeah, like it's mad. I, 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 last year, I won two shows on doing 30 minutes cardio. Yeah. Back in the day, yeah, like Dennis, like I remember, like I used to do two hours cardio a day. I was one of them guys. I used to love doing it. I, I was, that's bodybuilding. That's the whole point. Like, got to go to the gym again at night when it's late and everyone else is asleep. You're the, you're the last person up and the first, first person up. I was getting up at 4 a.m. doing cardio. I was going back to the gym at 10 p.m. doing mm. cardio. And that, I, I loved it, but Pat has certainly taught me that if you can get your body in a really healthy place and you can have your metabolism in a really good spot and you can train very intense, then you can ease off the amount of cardio you do and let your body do a lot of the work for you with the training intensity. Yeah. Um, there might need to be more cardio. If there is, there is. So I have yeah. no problem with that. But for now, 30 minutes a day is, is pretty adequate and weights coming down. So. Yeah, but everybody's different. Some people like, you know, if you have a fast metabolism like you probably do, you know, you get away with 30 minutes. Some, somebody else might have to do an hour. Somebody, somebody can do two hours and will still not in shape. You know, absolutely, it's, absolutely. It's, it's just the matters of, you know, like if everything is spot on and your body, because I remember there was times, there was years where you didn't feel like you're suffering, but your body responded like crazy. Yeah. And then you're like, it's a head, it's a head. It's almost, I like, haven't really started oh. cardio yet. And I'm leaner than I was four weeks out last time I stepped on stage. So this, this yeah. is, you know, it happens. And this is, this is an indication of, for your body saying, telling you, listen, we, we good right now. We, we're in a good place. Yes. Absolutely. So, so when you when you and you motivate yourself, you go to the gym every day, and and I know how taxing is this, and and, and especially you know when you're getting ready for the best of the best of the best. Yeah. So you, so I'm, I'm, if I think about myself, I set myself a goal in my head: is that this is what I want to do. This at least I want to. Let's say I want to be in the top six. I want to be whatever. What goal? Do you, and I know you don't brag. You're not a bragger. You're a very humble person, and I appreciate that. And I love that about you, and I hope you keep that up because this is going to take you super far. But in your head, you know, what do you tell yourself? What is it that you want to achieve at this Olympia? Looking at all these other guys, that could, the newcomers, because there's going to be a new crop, and you included. And I had a few talks with guys where I forgot to mention you because I was thinking, but you, Ian, Hunter, um, um, Sergio, um, who am I forgetting now? Probably two or three. You guys are going to be the new generation. But where do you see yourself now, especially after looking at Ian winning two shows back to back, which just gave him a, a tremendous amount of hype? I'm a, absolutely. You I, know? I, I spoke to Pat after those wins and I was like, wow, I don't know if I can defeat that. <laughs> <laughs> but then I, did, and then I did respond to that. I did respond to that. That's, that's just the immediate feeling. Yeah. And I'm very happy for him because seeing him look that good is obviously motivation because number one, I know that I've got to work harder, but number two, I also know how improved he is because of the coach that we share. So I have a lot of faith in Patrick's ability with all of us. Mm -hmm. um, is, there a comp I, I, is there a little internal competition going not on? Not really, not really. I suppose there is. Like yeah. When we go in the gym, every time there is, but we don't, you know, we don't really say it, but obviously there is, like you do want to defeat everybody. And I have said, I want to beat every one of the new crop. I mm -hmm. want to be the best in the new crop for sure. Like, I don't want Nick beating me. I don't want uh, Hunter beating me because I feel like I've been doing this longer than all them. I feel like I, I'm, I feel like, it's weird because we'll all say the same, but bodybuilding has been part of my life since I was, uh, you know, like I, I started in a gym when I was like 12 years old. There is a reason I'm doing it. There's something, there's something deep down, almost universal, like an energy that I'm doing it. I don't even want to do it sometimes, but I do do it because it's part of who I am. Mm -hmm. And that, that feeling of, being so um bound to it i feel like there's like, i'm not a destiny kind of guy but i feel like there's a destiny to do better than everybody for 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 at least one year to become the best yeah and i i ride off that like i i, I look at dorian and i'm at like, dorian did it i can do it yeah i look at dorian and I, and I know dorian didn't have all of the body parts i know he didn't like i can analyze the physique i've, I've been a body for years i can look at people and say what they got and what they haven't got this right brain. true but but I also know that there, there's just something about aura. There's something about physiques that can overshadow some of the strengths of other people if you get it right. Yeah. And Dorian having immaculate condition that no one can ever explain because you had to have been there apparently to see it is something that I'm aiming to achieve. I'm aiming to achieve a, a look that will only be transcribed and and a, able to discuss by people who are there in front of me. Because I I've seen it. Like I've had live I've had live. Um, uh, play by plays of shows I've done and people other journalists say I'm not on and I'm winning the show mm -hmm. and I'm like it's because you're not there man like you shouldn't judge on a, on a live play by play yeah it's very hard it's, I say it all the time you know time. If I, like, 
Yeah, like I'm here, man, and I'm, I'm and I guarantee you, and, and and that's so. All that matters to me is that whoever's there immediately in front of me goes away from that night, that those two nights at the Olympia, and says, "Guys, you don't understand. Like you don't understand. Like you can look at all the pictures you want, but nothing's going to translate to what James bought that day." Yeah, and that's all I want. So, so now answer the question. <laughs> Where I, mean, do you, I, I want to beat what, them all. Okay, do you want to beat them all? So, what's your goal? Top six. It's realistic. I want top six. If I you want, want top six, if, I, I, I absolutely want top six. James, I absolutely want top six. If you beat all the guys we mentioned, and I forgot Nick and okay, if you beat all those guys, you automatically in the top six. I, I want top six. Yeah. So I want to be standing. I want to be standing next to Bonac. I want to be standing next to Bonac, Rami, and and Hadi. Yeah. And, and Akim. I think Akim's going to be improved, and I think he deserves to mention. I love Brandon. I think Brandon's amazing. But for some reason, I feel like I can beat Brandon. Yeah. And I'm not going to lie. I, I feel like I could beat Brandon because mm. I feel like there's something I have that he doesn't. And he's one of Mr. Olympia. And I know it's crazy. And I like Brandon. He's going to be shut your face. He's going to be like, shut your face. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Brandon, but, Brandon but is I super cool. Brandon. Listen, I respect Brandon massively. But for some reason, I just feel like I can beat him on stage. Mm. And and it may never happen, but it's a belief right now that I can be against the monsters of a Kim, Hardy, Rami, and William. Yeah. I feel like they're the top four for me. Right now, I feel like they're the top four. Yeah, I mean, yeah, um, if you look at last year, yeah, they're absolutely the, the, the top guys. But I, I tell you this. You have something that I don't think anybody else on that stage has. I think Ian is trying to achieve that. The condition that you bring is going to stand out. That's my opinion. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Now, keep in mind, Rami, and I say this every time, Rami was beat by all the guys in the top six for seven years. Why? Because yeah. he didn't bring that condition that you need. Yeah. So now, we always say, okay, well, if everybody's 100%, that's what we believe. But I know for a fact <laughs> that will never, to this day, you had an Olympia since, uh, absolutely. since 2000. Absolutely. Before in the 90s, yes, top 10, all, all peeled. But since yeah. 2000, we never had an Olympia where all the guys were on. So there's yeah. going to be somebody, and maybe even a few more, that's going to leave the door open for guys like you yes. and, and others, Nick and the Nicks and the Sergios and the, and the Ians, because, you know, to leave the door open for you guys to step in. So I think it's going to be a little, if there's going to be a war going on between the new crop, who's going to put himself, you know, himself, you know in front and, and, you know, because I think there can be two guys in the top six. Yeah. And eventually it's, it's going to happen. I believe it's going to happen this year. So it's just a matter of who brings the condition that stands out at the show. And I believe yeah. you got that. Okay. I, I, Ian, I, Ian is I, on I, his I, way. I, I, oh, definitely. That's why I'm like, Pat, like, make sure you fucking do something with me as well, mate. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I love him. Yeah. But yeah. Um, it's you know it's, what uh, you, you know who has the hardest part the hardest work when it comes to that especially because of you and Ian it's Pat yeah because he's gonna be there it's like you know he don't want neither one of you guys yeah. beat each other yeah, you want <laughs> best case scenario would be you both you guys both place the same spot because yeah. you guys dead on same same places from each judge you know what I'm Son, saying got exactly the same points <laughs> <laughs> I am um, yeah I. I We'll see. We'll see. I like I say. I'm just. All you can do is just do what you can do. Yeah. You know, every day, um, and 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 all you can do is have faith and belief and just know that it it doesn't because it, like because it is bodybuilding, it isn't running across a line the fastest, so it isn't clear cut. So there are ways. It's like it can swing in your favor, like you say, if someone's just slightly off. It, it's as simple as that. And as bodybuilders, you kind of have to. You're not focused on that. You have to focus on you have to focus on perfecting yourself. But know in the back of your mind that there will be a few people that stray because they made a few issues, and that's just part of it. Mm -hmm. And you know that's gonna like you say come Olympia time we'll see what happens and um, it will be how it'll be. But I don't know. I'm I'm really interested and I just I just hope that my inner feelings and my it's almost like a religious feeling. I'm not even a religious person, but my feelings towards bodybuilding tell me that that I'm meant to at some point be someone in this bodybuilding that made great 
things happen. Yeah. I, I, I don't know what it is. It's something I can't explain. Yeah. No, you don't have to explain it, you know, but it's a good, that's yeah. a good way of thinking. And you need that because we're going through a lot of stuff. We got to train and you, unless you believe in yourself that you're going to, you know, at eventually benefit from what the work that you put in, you know, how can you continue doing that? So now let me ask you something yeah. else though. We just saw uh, the, uh, yeah. sp the Ali Kanta show. Another fellow Englishman just beat oh, Roly Winkler. Nathan the Asher, so it's going to be two guys representing England. And uh, how do you see how do you see Nathan coming back after? I think about two years, three, uh, two years, not competing. Uh, I think the last show he did was nineteen. It was yeah. nineteen British. He won the nineteen British. It's been a, been a while. Um, I think it was a good. I think he brought a really good comeback for Zeke, especially the speed of the comeback in regards to like diet time. Mm -hmm. He didn't diet for very long. He's a phenomenon when it comes to getting in shape quick. Um, He brought his trademark kind of X frame. Um, I think Rody kind of left the door open because Rody, unfortunately, the lower body has taken a hit. He still looks yeah. fantastic. You, you, you feel I the think, same. You feel the same as me. Yeah, yeah. I think Rody looked amazing. Like God, mm. that that could still win a lot of shows like that. Rody, but Nathan presented his legs and stuff in a way that made them look very large. Like the stance he takes, even though it's not, I'm not a fan of having your legs really wide. It's like- He don't have to stand, these, yeah. I think this, he doesn't have to stand yeah. that far. He's got a he great sweep. His legs, yeah. his legs are really good. And and you can see the, the, the depth from the abductor to the outer thigh. And it's almost like they they judged Rody on his previous self. They looked at Rody like your legs are down. We're going to have to take a point away from this. Because yeah. I don't think Nathan, I don't think Nathan in this show was a lot better than he's ever been. But it was damn good enough, and I think Nathan will get actually better now because he's still dieting for whatever it may be, the Olympia, the Arnold UK, any of these shows. I think Nathan's on his way back. I think Nathan's only going to get better mm -hmm. um, for the next year or so. Let's let's um, let's. I am a fan of Nathan. Yeah, let's break down Rolly first. Let's break down Rolly. Do you think yeah. Father Time is catching up? Yeah, I think so. I think because when you see it happening to people's like it's the lower body, like when the lower body doesn't have the same volume as it used to have, that's often that sign of the you know. The turning of the tide in regards to age. I don't know if it's. I don't think it's anything they're doing when they're training. I don't think it's no. injury. I think it's. No. I think it's literally just the the it's this, you know the recovery process in the legs. Yeah. Just isn't the same as it used to be. And obviously he's got freaky standout body parts like his arms, shoulders. They're going to hold on the longest. So yeah. they're still going to be great for probably another 10 years. Yeah. But the weaker body parts are going to start to fade. And unfortunately for Roly, the lower body that's half your body at a show and that's half your points gone. Um, so I feel for him because I feel like there, a lot of him was on and I feel like he did look really good, but the outer sweep on the quads was especially flat. Um, and that isn't something that can come back from carving up. That's literally the muscle isn't there where it used to be. Um, so yeah, I think it's father time. It's, yeah. it's father time. Yeah. It's, 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 uh, I, I saw he, he was better than he was in Tampa at the, at the Chicago, I mean, Atlanta at the Chicago pro. But um, yeah, I, I say this f I've not only now. I think I've seen, I've saw this a couple of years ago that his his sweep is kind of is is gone, you know. And I I listen. I went through this. I know exactly what's happening, and I know he's training just as hard, if not even harder, than he trained before. Because when you're young and when all your muscles are popping, you know, we did suffer like we did later on in in life. Right. You know, when we, right. you know, we were, when we chasing. People always ask how I got here. I was willing to work just a little harder than everyone else. Every damn day. If I can have hundreds of hours back, you know I'm gonna grab them. Spending hours prepping chicken, rice, and vegetables. F that. I rely on perfect nutrition. I rely on trifecta. Packages that we had years prior, you know, having to work, having to work harder to have what we once had is yeah, like exactly. Because I know people have been for it. <laughs> once, once you get to the point where you chase a, a package that you had five, six years prior, that means you're going backwards. Okay. So, like, like can I ask now? I'm going to ask you a question. You want to show? Absolutely. So, like, was there was there a was there a, a package at a time that you look back on? You're like, I just need to get like that again. Yes, of course. <laughs> and, and, what, and what was and what was that time? Two thousand three and two thousand four. Yeah, because you got third in the uh, fourth, so fourth, 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 fourth. Yeah. I remember you placing them really high. Yeah, so but, yeah, I can imagine. But you know, I, I, the, the, and you know what? What else? That was my lightest ever. 
bodybuilding day. Eh? So it's funny how it works sometimes. Do you remember? Do you remember? You see this this videos with me in the blue tank top training at goals with Charles yeah, yeah. overlooking. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You had uh, were the Titan ones, were the Titan videos. It was one of those ones. Were it yes, yes. It was it was one of the two. I know. Yes, well, I've seen exactly. It there, that was yeah. that was, and that was Sorry. one of them years where everything was. It's like easy. I'm having fun. I'm in the gym training. I wasn't fucking tired. I was shit was happening. My shoulders were twice the size of my head. I was like everything's yeah. happening. You know, and I was chasing this, and then 2004 was, you know, I was right there, but after that, I'm chasing it, and it's like, yeah, what do I have to do in order to get that back, you know? And then 2006, I had this issue with my back for a long time, and, and, and all of a sudden, my leg sweep was gone. I was like, damn. Well, the thing is, that's the thing with, the thing with back, like, nerves damage like that. People don't realize, like, if, if a back injury occurs, like, the effect it has on the lower body because of the, the nerves feeding through. So Rowley possibly could have even had a back injury. Who knows? Yeah. You just never know. But you um, know, it's, it, we always say, you know, once you get forty and over, it's start, it's starting to hit them legs first. Unless you are like yeah. probably like Rami. I think Rami will probably lose the upper body before he loses squats. Oh God, he's, that's what I mean by strong body. <laughs> those legs ain't going anywhere. He's yeah. going to be a granddad with those things. Yeah, you know what I mean. He's not going yeah. anywhere. I, I feel. Um, I I want to say I feel bad for Rowley, but I still believe he can. He can. You know, and he might have to sacrifice a little condition. For fullness, yeah. But then again, yeah. what will work best for him at the Olympia? Work, was would it work better if he comes in super full, with the legs as full as possible, or would it be better if he comes in super shredded? You know. So I like I, I like how Rody looked back at like the um, oh, was it 2010 uh, New York Pro. New York Pro? Well, he's, I'm glad you say this, man. I'm glad you're saying it. I say this for six, uh, for 11 right. years. That was the best role you ever step on stage. I don't care how many shows and you. It, I don't care how many shows you won after that. For uh, me, what's the common what's the common thing we just said there about weight? That would have been his lightest as well. Yes. Oh, he was so peeled. That was right there, front row. That those the, that show used to have such a good when it was in that that blue auditorium. It had like really good light. It, it tried. Like it tried that. back. You competed in. You competed in the 2000 and, uh, did you do the one with Evan or the one? Yes, I did the, uh, the New York in 2000, I did the Night of Champions. Then we did the yeah. New York Pro, I think two or three times. It was 2009, 2007. You were, getting like, you were getting like, nice, yeah, you were getting like nice top three finishes in multiple shows at that yeah. time. Oh yeah, I got, I got, over and over. I got 12 second place finishes in, my, in the pro ranks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You did, I remember that being <laughs> terrible. Nice. I was like, how many, how, what do I have to do to win a damn show? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Second, second place is sometimes the <laughs> so annoying. Yeah, yeah. So let's let's talk about Nathan though. Nathan is coming on strongly. He's winning. He beat Roly, which yeah. puts him in a good place. Where do you see where, where do you see Nathan going now in this new? Adding, I, I don't even want to call him new crop because he's been there before. But now he's already established. Yeah, yeah, but he's coming back to the Olympia, and you know now he's going to have to fight young dogs that's been doing some real noise and damage in the last two years while he was gone. Mm. So it's not like, you know, he can just come back and say, hey, I'm Nathan the Asher. I was, no, I think he's going to yeah, have to fight yeah. you guys. I think it's going to be a battle. Like, you have to remember, like, Nathan used to be Ian, like, by a place or two, like, all the shows they did together. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that would be the case now. Mm -hmm. I think the Ian that we saw, especially in Texas, is a threat to anybody. Um, including Nathan, including myself, including top tier guys. Um, but one thing that I think the judges like Nathan's physique. So that helps him because they seem to really reward his kind of X frame look. I've seen people against him who are probably more muscled and, and really conditioned and him still beat them. Um, and I think shape carries you a very long way in some mm -hmm. shows. I don't know if it depends on the head judge or someone likes a look that he has, put it that way, and, and fair play. And he plays that, and he knows that. Yeah. He knows that he's got a look that not a lot of people have. And there was a time where I was like, Nathan's look is the sort of look that would be up there with the Brandons, um, you know, in that top five for sure. Like there was a few guys where Dexter was still around, Sean Roden. I always thought Nathan would, if he got it right, would be up there with Sean and all those lot because mm -hmm. of the structure. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. I still think potentially he could be definitely like a top six guy if if they reward that look. What do you think you know? his weight was? What this show just gone? Mm -hmm. He said it was really heavy, but I think he's ball ball. I don't. Know, I think he's taking the mick. I reckon he's probably about two two forty six. Two yeah. I don't reckon he's heavier yeah. than that. I think if he was he's shorter, than, he's shorter than me. 
Yeah, I think if he would drop whatever he was. Maybe he was heavy. I needed to drop. Maybe he was too, a little bit heavier. Yeah. Like I think if he would say. drop eight to 10 pounds from that show. Yeah, the crisp. If he got his glutes how he's had them before. If he would get that super thin skin that looks like yeah. it's shiny without even putting lotion or yeah. oil or whatever on. If he can get that, he, and he had it in the beginning of his career he, when he was winning the he shows. I, I tell you when he had that, he had that in California when he won. Yeah. So when uh, if he gets he, that, yeah. if he gets that, he's a threat too. Yeah. Absolutely. So Nathan, if you listen, get yeah. yourself in uh, absolute crazy condition, lad. I'd be the we first one it. to tell people, listen, size is all nice, but if you are if you are big and 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 you and you don't bring the condition, these younger this this lighter kids are going to go over you because they create an illusion that you can't create. You know, yeah. only yeah. if you stand literally next to each other, you can see someone is bigger. But, but then you look at the detail, you know, that the things that's something that I want to see. I want to see detail again. Sometimes like there comes a point where silhouette is great and size and yeah. how, long, how much of the stage you take up is great. But then then you start getting analytical and what's within that structure. And someone who looked like they were first with their size can eventually be third because everything within it isn't quite as good as yeah. the next man. So I don't know. It depends how hard the judges are looking. It depends on the stage, the lighting. If it's good and it's revealing and it really shows the true condition, mm -hmm. then you need to make sure you're in absolute crazy shape. For true. sure. Yeah. I love bodybuilding for being in shape. Like for me, I feel like it's not bodybuilding unless you take yourself to those dark places and get in shape. Yeah. Like it, it seems like half a journey for me and it's almost the same with posing. Like I, I did a a posing video the other day with my, my posing coach and I was trying to explain like I saw that my, yeah I was just saying my opinion of, of well, posing know. these days I think yeah. we should all concentrate more because I think we owe it to bodybuilding to show it in a better light like people used to because people used to make more of an effort with their posing yeah my, my advice mandatories hit the mandatories yeah. all, all day every day you see what's happening you can't master if you don't master them if you don't master them you've got nothing you've got nothing the stamina is important you see what they're doing Foul five call outs Back to back. You saw what happened in, 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 in Texas? I can tell you exactly what happened. Yeah. It was so close. They literally made these guys work. And almost yeah. like, you know, let them figure it out. Who fades is yeah. going to lose. Yeah, it's up to, it's up to you on stage. Whoever wants to. I'm surprised that. because at pre-judging, when they did the last call outs, Ian was fading. Yeah. I'm not saying his physique was fading, but he couldn't help. No, he, he couldn't pose. Steve was polished to the point. Yes. Where That's why I thought after prejudging, I thought they might give it to Steve because you could literally mm. see in the last call out that Ian, he was holding the post anymore. He would in last, you know, and out yeah, first. Yeah, Th yeah. Those are the things. And at the Olympia, I know for a fact what's going to happen. You guys. Oh, Steve's going to make people like. You guys going to work <laughs> for that money. <laughs> oh, Trust me. Uh, that's that, And that's where someone like Nathan actually does really well in those, those relaxed shots. Like the, he's very like calm and doesn't struggle. Mm -hmm. You can hold them forever. So yeah, yeah. Like you need to literally just drill those. I remember watching Chris Cormier back in the day, in in like the little box sweaty box imposing room, and just hitting them over and over again till he was like eight pounds down. <laughs> just yeah. literally, and it just shows us what you got to do. Like yeah. you got to drill the posing as much as you drill the training and drill the nutrition. And I think more. I think you got to drill the posing more because you could have the best body in the world, best condition. If you can't show it no oh, more sure because it you're weak, yeah. because you yeah. <laughs> you start shaking, it's over. All that condition is going out the window. Yeah, that's why pay it's, attention it's, to that. That's very important because you're gonna. You, it's just gonna be your first Olympia, and I, I believe you can make a statement. You know, yeah, coming I've in. Make and, sure I'm, I, I've got to make sure that I'm. This thing, there's, there's being in condition, but then there's being conditioned. Yeah. And, how, and how early is when you can handle the, yeah. the, the the situation right right how far out do you think you want to be almost there <laughs> typically i'm like not far off like around about three four weeks out like mm -hmm. not far like I'm, I'm purposely not on because i need that little bit of time just to cruise in but normally like my body fat it's not far off where it needs to be around about the, the four yeah. week out mark so that things can be really gentle for the last four weeks um and I think this year, because of travel, mine and Pat's plan is to kind of be in good shape before travel commences so that if there is any, you know, BS on the way, mm -hmm. we're already kind of there. So it's not going to damage the process because the last thing you want to do is not be in shape, travel in and try and play catch up. So there is a plan in place to obviously try to achieve a certain look 
a certain part of, like mm-hmm. a stage in this process before we even get off the ground so that we yeah. we're not playing uh we're not playing catch up for sure because that's the last thing you want to do man imagine like you're two weeks out and you're not in shape and you, you've got to literally do more cardio than you've ever done you're going to bring a wasted physique yeah like i always aim to be in shape yeah. a, bit, a bit early for sure Did, you know if i was in my country and if i weren't having to like fly and i was doing a show here a little bit different i'd probably be in shape two weeks out yeah because um, if so you're in your own environment, easy. everything is a little bit easier. <clears throat> you know it where is. you get your it food. Really so you got you got yeah. somebody in the states that that that's taking care of you. Are the, uh, is it Aaron uh, Aaron Singerman and the Redcon? Yeah. So yeah. So once I'm over with them, like my manager Rudy at Redcon, like they're great. Like if I need a food prep company, they'll sort it. If I need to do my own food, they'll sort a room that I have cooking appliances. Like they're really good. I've stayed over there before, and. Uh, I spent some time over there with Luke uh, for the Arnold in the 2020, and mm. uh, they were fantastic. They really looked after us. So I have no worries once I'm in America that I'll be fine. That's why. That's the one bit I'm actually looking forward to, because I know that once I'm there, everything's um, going to be smooth you know, sailing yeah, from it's, there. Yeah, got Redcon gym. You know, got all the things I need. There's nothing, no issues. I don't have to. You know, obviously any supplements. I need, they're just there. Just go in the warehouse yeah. and take them for cheers, guys. <laughs> so you ain't got to worry about any of that. So right. yeah, I, it, I, 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 I think that'd be the most relaxed part of it. Good. Awesome. Is is Redcon having a booth at the Olympia? Are they going to make you work the booth too? I'm or? pretty sure they will. I'm pretty sure they will. Um, I'm hoping they do. Because yeah. then it will mean that I've got something to do if I get bored. <laughs> they're, they're definitely, um, they, the, the they, good thing is that the US fans going to have access to you. They get to know you. They get to meet you. They get to shake your hand, take pictures with you. And that's, that's yeah. another very important part, you know, that some people don't understand. Well, yeah, and Dennis, that's where I have, I'm not there yet. Like, and that's why I need this, this Olympia is important because it's the first time where I'm a competitor who's done well, who's doing the Olympia, who can, it's put yourself out there. Mm. You know, it's the network, for me, it's the networking, it's the socializing, it's talking to the people. Because of course I've got a few people in America that like me and know who I am, but I'm, I'm, I'm a UK based bodybuilder who's done okay. But the Olympia is the part where you transition from, you know, a UK bodybuilder to a global one. Mm-hmm. And, you know, ultimately you want to be a global bodybuilder and you want to have a connection and a reach to as many people as possible um, so that you can, I don't know, just enjoy the lifestyle of being a bodybuilder, really. Right. You never thought about throwing your hat in the mix at the Arnold two weeks out? That was never... Yeah, but I didn't apply. I would have done the Arnold. Oh. I didn't apply. So I never... Yeah, so I would have, absolutely. Like, And the more I've seen Sergio and that hype it up, like, let's do it. I was like, oh, man... But then, and then it was too late, and Patrick was like, "We'll do next year." <laughs> so. Isn't 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 um, Nathan doing the Arnold in England? He's he's signed up to the UK one, so I'm a bit confused because. But isn't that like out. a week out from the Olympia or two weeks? Well, this is my point. So we are meant to be out of the country for two weeks to, in order to go to the US. So he's either got to make a decision. He's either going to do the Olympia or the UK Arnold, which I can't see why. Choose the latter. So we'll see. We need to get. We need to get. Yeah, that would that, that, that wouldn't work. He would literally shoot himself out the Olympia. I, 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 yeah, like I, I don't know. Maybe he signed up to the UK Arnold as an insurance policy that if the Spain didn't work out for him, that he still had a show where he could have gone and won some money. Because obviously, there's a good paycheck in the uh, UK Arnold. It's better than a regular show. So let's say he didn't get top two in in Spain, he could stay on a diet and do that UK one as a as an insurance policy for himself and mm-hmm. still get a win. Um, and now that he's qualified for the, the Olympia, maybe that might change. So yeah. I'm, I'm, I'll wait and see. I don't actually know. Obviously, I'm friends with Nathan, but I don't really pick his. You know, I don't. I don't bother him and ask him his personal kind of details. But I'm sure he'll make some sort of announcement soon. Yeah. Um, in regards to that, because we, everyone wants to see him at the Olympia more so than any other show, don't they? So. True. True. I mean, everybody wants to be on that Olympia stage. Because... It's the big show. It's it's like it's the one. Like I, you have to. Sometimes you've got to turn down other things for the the greater. You know the greater yeah. event, but is is Na- now Nathan is not isn't he's not doing? Uh, I mean, Roly is doing the uh, the Arnold in in Columbus. He's doing um, a regular Arnold, yeah, yeah. Wow, that's yeah. Well, I would I would have loved to have done that regular Arnold because I saw it in 2020 and I thought it was a great show. Yeah, because you guys could have already determined who's going to be the front runner into the Olympia. It, it, it would have been like a nice um, way to like because I obviously haven't done as many shows with Patrick as Ian. They've kind of got it nailed now. Like, so I would have liked to have had a show to yeah. try the method. And then I would be like, okay, so a couple of weeks after, did that work? Did it not work? Now we've got the Olympia. Because the thing at Arnold, like, one of you could come first at the Arnold and then come sixth at the Olympia. I've seen it happen. 
Yeah, it doesn't but, necessarily uh, mean you, it's not a guarantee, is it? You know? No, it's not, but it's a fat check. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great check. I always thought that. What is that Arnold now? What, 100 and 130 or 140? Yeah, that would First be nice. price? That'd be nice. That's why, like, I think when, when the year Brandon won both, I'm like, damn, man, that was a good year. <laughs> that was, that was a real... Good that, year. Dexter did that too. He won, he won nine I know. finals. I mean, five, oh, oh, five yeah. in Ohio. So uh, let, let, let me put you on the spot before we finish this off. I want to put you on the spot. Awesome. Yeah, I do this with everybody. So I want to get your top six prediction. Yeah. You can go in particular order or you can say, um, I'm just going to give you the six names. But let's see how, how, how deep can you go. Give me your top six for the 2021 Olympia. And don't be, hey, listen, uh, and don't, uh, don't be do afraid to do in order as well. Okay. I'm going to in order. I think um, Rami for the repeat. Hardy Japan in second. Um, you don't have to be nice and be real. No, I'm no, like, I'm, I'm, like, I'm, 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 yeah, no, definitely. Uh, third will be, do you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something crazy. I think Ian might get as top high as third. Okay. Uh, fourth, me. Okay. <laughs> Fifth, Bonac, and sixth, and sixth, Nick. What about Brandon? Sorry, Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Brandon. Yeah, I mean, that, got, I, I, there's only six spaces. So I'm trying to keep. So you, up, so I, you I see, Ian's got a lot of momentum. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's a that's a that's that's a real prediction right there. It's a crazy. It's a, it might be a crazy top six, but look this. If it happens, I'll, then you call me Mystic Meg. I will I, call um, you. I will call you Mystic James for sure. Yeah, because 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 thing is, I just feel like there's a change of guard is coming. It's coming. Uh, and if it doesn't happen, if it doesn't happen now, it will happen soon because Ian's already setting. Ian and Hunter already said things. I didn't even put Hunter there. Forget that. Mm. You know? But that says a lot. That says a lot because I still think, I think Ian beats Hunter on terms of that dry condition, um, and I think I will as well. That's yeah. Hunter uses his fuel. That's cool, man. Come to the show looking good. <laughs> yeah, true. That's yeah. awesome, man. I like I like that you're real and you and 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 you, and you say because a lot of people they, you know they think it but they won't say it because they think you know and and this is you know you're not knocking on nobody you're not shitting on anybody no you know I'm I'm I'm, 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 I'm almost counting I'm almost counting on what we spoke about earlier that some people will not quite get it right this year so for but for Brandon not making top six what do you think how how much does he have to how would that happen what's, what's going to happen how, how, how much does he have to mess up in order not to do you what, what do you quite think a, is, quite a lot. What do you think he's going to, what's going to be the mistake for him that his, the approach that he's taking? Because I have mine, uh, that my theory, but what is yours? Um, I think if he comes in too light, he'll be outsized. Okay. So for me, the only, th the only variable that really could hurt Brandon is if he just comes down a bit too much uh, and then it makes him not able to stand to next to some of those bigger guys. Yeah. Because I know Brandon and I've met Brandon and I've been next to Brandon and he isn't a big guy. He's amazing. And I know that smaller guys can beat big guys easy. I've seen it happen other times. But mm. if you do come down a bit too much, it might hurt you. So I don't know. Yeah. Maybe See, come I'm down going, a little bit too I'm much. I'm going the exact opposite. Come in too big. Come I in too think cool. he's... Because, you know, last year he, he came down because he wanted to compete with Phil's condition. Yeah. And now he's got to compete with Rami because he wants to beat Rami. So he has to come in big. And I believe he's going to come in too big and he doesn't bring the condition. That's the, the interesting th thing is, the interesting thing is, if he listens to this, he's going to have to make a decision on which one. <laughs> yeah. Which way am I going? He's going to be like, I've got to avoid, I've got to avoid what James said, or I've got to avoid what yeah. they said. I, no, it, it doesn't matter because this is we, we just we have we just have our opinion. I mean, they they can have oh, their game course, plan. They can do whatever they Definitely. think is right for them. I just Absolutely. believe that the biggest mistake would be trying to chase Rami in size because he's not going to be as big as Rami. No one, no, exactly. And that. the no only thing that can happen is that he will be not in the condition that he needs to be on to stand next to some of the other guys, especially Hardy. Yeah, Hardy's going to be a freak this year, guarantee. I think he's going to be revengeful. It's already on. For, for, it's, he's showing us every I've, day. I've, yeah, I've, he's putting yeah, it in, I, a, I, in our face every day. I, I, I would go as far as saying if there's one person that can win other than Rami, it's Hardy. Yeah. Those are the. Two, that's why I've said it many a times. Like mm -hmm. even on my own podcast, I agree. Like I, I think Huddy is a top 
caliber bodybuilder in this era, like something else. I think Rami is the 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 Ronnie Coleman s kind of the, you know the the huge, which is so hard to beat. The only way that really I think anyone's beating Rami is if Rami gets it wrong. If he's off, yeah, which he, yeah, that's which it. he like, was I, seven just, years back to back. Exactly, exactly. So yeah. you know, you never, you just never know. I'd be I, the I first one to admit that. Yeah, I'm the first one to yeah, admit. And you're, and you're like one of the closest people to him. Like, yeah, this is just real life talk. You know, and 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 I tell him all the time, you, you got to be better than you were last year. If you're not better, to, you're, there's going to be some problems. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. Brother, I so, appreciate I mean, yeah. it. Go ahead. I I'm sorry. you, man. No, no, I appreciate you. I was saying, I think Hardy's the most dangerous person in bodybuilding right now. He is, absolutely. And, and without a doubt, yeah. the most dangerous guy. I appreciate you coming on, my man. I know it's late over there now. And I'm looking forward to seeing you get on stage and absolutely kill it and represent in England, man, because we need guys like you back on that stage. So everybody else you, can man. maybe look at you and say, listen, damn, we don't have to, we're going to have to follow this and, you know, and bring the condition that we used to see on, on the stage. You know, it's, it's, yeah. I'm not saying nobody's in shape. I'm just saying it's just not as consistent yeah. as it used to be where the top 10 or the top 15 guys were all in condition. You didn't have to worry about who's going to be off and on. You just have to worry about who's going to be bigger and better. You know, absolutely. So, uh, well, and um, I, I, I guarantee that you know this this talk with you has been very motivating, and I'll take everything that you've said as well on a personal level forward. And it'll be a lot of energy and motivation towards this prep. So I yeah. appreciate it a lot. Appreciate it a lot. Absolutely, man. I'm a fan of the sport, and I got to give credit where credit is due. Also, next time you speak to Pat, tell Pat I said keep killing it. I will. I will. Okay. Say, don't worry. Is he, is he going to be Certainly able? To, is he going to be able to make it? He'll have to do something like me. We're, we're discussing. We're Will, discussing Willie, currently. yeah, tell him. Tell him. Hey, yeah. listen. Tell him. Just let's go to damn fucking Dubai or Mexico with you. I, 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 listen, I'll pay, I, I know he's got enough money, but I would happily pay for it to take him with me because of I know what an experience it would be for us both and for Ian and yeah. for the few athletes that he has. It'd be fantastic to have him there. So uh, he's he's under pressure. Is it going to be Ian? Is it going to be Ian? Does he have to go through this too? No, he can just come in from Canada. How does that work? I think Ian's fine. I think Ian's fine because he's just been to. He's into Texas. If he's in Texas at the minute, I think. Yeah, but he's going to go back yeah. to Canada, right? Maybe. Maybe, maybe, or maybe he's hanging around. I really don't know. I'll oh, have to ask. I'll have okay. to ask. All right, awesome. We'll see. You know what, Emblock? They're, they're all very close, all these guys, so yeah. they can stay, stay with each other and stuff. So. All right, brother. I'll, I'll wish you a great Big rest day. rest of the prep, my man. Keep going. Thank you, sir. And let's, let, let's go do this. Thank you so much. Thank you, brother. Stay safe. God bless you, my friend. And you, brother. Take Peace care. and love you. Thank you. Bye, awesome, brother.